Sketching for Architects and Designers Robert's Architecture This video will teach you how to quickly draw like an architect. Everyone should know how to think spatially, not just architects and designers. At its core, drawing is a means of communicating ideas. It is a basic skill like reading and writing, or basic arithmetic. Yet, it is not taught in school. The ability to envision an object or space and be able to manipulate it in one's mind should be a fundamental skill all people should have, not just architects and designers. Want to learn? Let's get started. The Box Method One of the quickest ways to learn to think spatially and learn to draw using perspective is to draw a box or a cube. If you can draw a box in perspective, you can draw anything accurately and in perspective. Three kinds of perspective. What one realizes as you draw the box is there are three kinds of perspective. One, two, and three point perspective. One point perspective. One point perspective is when the box is directly in front of your eyes. The lines of the box converge at one point on the horizon. In one point perspective, one face of the box is parallel to the picture plane, making the vertical lines stay vertical. Horizontal lines converge to one vanishing point at the horizon line. Basic language. Cone of vision. When we see, there is a cone of vision for the eyes. When objects fall outside this cone of vision, our eyes can't see it. But when drawing, we can create things our eyes can't see. This can warp the box, creating lines that make no sense to our eyes. When drawing a box, we need to stay inside the cone of vision, or the lines skew, making nonsensical perspectives. Two-point perspective. The second kind of perspective is called two-point. In this perspective, the lines of the box seem to converge at two different points on the horizon. In two-point perspective, one edge of the box is parallel to the picture plane, and no faces of the box are parallel to the picture plane. From the edge closest to your eye, the sides of the box seem to recede as they move away from you. Basic language. Cutting edge. To give objects an architectural look, one draws outside lines darker and heavier. It makes the object stand out more. This outline is called a cutting edge and is also used in comic books to make the figures stand out from the page. Three-point perspective. The third kind of perspective is called three-point perspective. None of the lines are parallel. They all converge on three different points, two on the horizon line and one on a station point. Basic language. Picture plane. A picture plane is the piece of paper if you're drawing on a paper. For photography, it could be the photographic paper. For movies, it could be the video screen. Vanishing points. A vanishing point is where converging lines meet off in the distance. Horizon line. A person's eye level is called the horizon line. It is always level and at the level of your eyes. Station point. A station point is used in formal perspective drawing and represents the fixed location of a person's feet. Station points don't exist in camera or 3D modeling or in movies, so we won't discuss them here. But if you want to see how to construct a formal perspective drawing, leave a note in the comments below. Dividing a square. A square can be divided into small, equal parts using various techniques. Throughout the history of design and architecture, dividing a square has been a primary design technique. For our box technique, it becomes important to be able to measure how to draw a square in perspective. Dividing a cube. Squares drawn in perspective appear to diminish in size as they recede. By drawing a diagonal line through the center point of the square, one can measure the amount they recede. Here I'm drawing a square and having it recede into one-point perspective. Here I'm drawing a cube in two-point perspective. I'm using the same technique of dividing squares in order to measure the, the cube. Adding squares. Here I'm showing a technique for adding squares. 
this technique can be used in two dimensions to draw a square the same size by going from the diagonal through the halfway point through a box. This technique can also be used to show how squares recede in one point perspective or also two or three point perspective. Adding cubes. The adding squares technique can be used to multiply cubes and boxes. The same technique used in two dimensions can be used in three dimensions. Here I'm drawing a cube and using two point perspective and I'm using the same technique of adding squares to then add more cubes to this volume. Each cube is the correct size based on the cube next to it and is measured through adding of squares. Visualizing objects. Once boxes can be visualized, one can draw plans, elevations, sections, and reflected plans. Here I am drawing a plan view, front view, also called an elevation, and a side view. From these three views, one can visualize a three-dimensional object. This is a fundamental skill architects and designers need to master. Architects are always drawing in plans, sections, elevations, and reflected ceiling plans. And this technique is an excellent way to teach oneself how to think three-dimensionally and spatially about objects and spaces. Drawing objects in cubes. Volumes can be associated with visual objects. Start by drawing the volume, then draw an object in that volume. Here I am drawing a chair in what would be two boxes. This box method can be used for many common objects like furniture, houses, cars, and other things. Spatial transformations. Spatial transformations start with a known volume that people can easily identify, such as cubes, pyramids, or spheres. Then the designer manipulates or transforms the volume so people can see it has been changed. Often architecture is compared to a language. In this case, the base volume is a noun, while the transformation is a verb. This communicates certain things through abstract form and space. The most basic transformation is to add one volume to another. This tells the story that volumes have been constructed over time. Adding volumes is perhaps one of the most commonly used techniques for architects. Overlap or intersecting volumes show linking or penetrating of one form into another. This tells the story of two forces coming together and interpenetrating one another. Nesting or embedding one object or space into another is another technique. The volume can be read multiple ways. Perceptually, you experience both volumes at the same time. You experience nesting of one space within another space. Subtraction techniques can also be used such as cutting, removing, or chamfering. Here a smaller volume has been removed from a larger volume. This too can tell a story of forces acting on a volume. Something has caused a loss to the original form. There's so many transformation techniques, it's impossible to cover in this video. Some include dynamic symmetry, reflection, arrays, grids, and other transformations. If you'd like to see more on this, let me know in the comments below and I'll create a video of spatial transformations. Volumes can be modified to rotate and twist. Here it is clear a designer is trying to modify a cube to express a certain idea. Bending is another way a volume can be modified. This implies an outside force has been applied to the rectangular volume to make it bend. The story here is that forces are acting on the volume. This is a watercolor drawing I did of Villancourt Fountain in San Francisco on the Embarcadero. It is made from precast concrete square tubes. There are so many turns and twists to the tubes, it makes it very difficult to draw. This is perhaps the ultimate expression of spatial transformations in the form of bending, twisting, and overlapping. Boxitecture. 
Contemporary architecture has gone from blob architecture in the 2000s to box architecture today. The box sketching technique taught in this video is perfect for this style. One of the reasons for box architecture in contemporary architecture is architects are increasingly using 3D modeling tools like SketchUp as a primary drawing tool instead of actually drawing. SketchUp works by creating volumes, mostly boxes, and modifying them. There are a lot of 3D programs where complex geometries can be created, but it is just much easier to make a box. Here we see the building David Rubenstein Forum by Diller, Scofido, and Renfro. Visually, it looks like a bunch of boxes stacked on top of each other in a haphazard way. Here, they are communicating that the boxes have been affected by different environmental forces, such as sunlight and the view out. The story they tell is one of different forces acting on the boxes to create random geometries. Another architect who uses a lot of box texture is Briark Ingalls, whose firm is big. He uses a lot of spatial transformations of boxes. He may sketch, but I think he mostly uses 3D models to develop his ideas. His most box texture project is the Lego Brand House in Denmark. Here he designs the project as a series of overlapping boxes in the shape of Legos. I'll leave you with Philip Johnson's project for a skyscraper called Inhabitable Sculpture. This is my sketch of the project. This is perhaps my favorite box texture project as it has overlapping rectangular boxes randomly added to each other. There's so much one could do with this technique. The design options are endless. I hope this quick video on how to draw quickly has inspired you to pick up a pencil and start sketching. What do you think? Did this box method inspire you to sketch up some box texture projects? Leave your comments below. I'm Jamie Roberts. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.